All right, there it is. All right. So here we go. Uh, so we're going to uh, work on uh, outlining our argument. Uh, a lot of us have been um, a little bit ahead. Some of us have already com uh, completed our DBA. But a lot of the stuff that I'm grading is the um, outline. It's just, it's not as good as it should be, or as good as it could be, I guess. So just to go over the rules and procedures, make sure you guys participate, uh, use your mic and mute appropriately. Um, keep it PG, guys, be respectful. And then when we're finished, make sure you submit that proof for completion. All right, so our, our objectives today is to um, use our organ organizational strategies and tools. We're going to establish um, an organizational pattern. Uh, one of the hardest things to do is to get your thoughts out, right? So our essential question is how can I present how can I present the claims and counterclaims for my argument of essay in an organized you know, fashion? You know, I originally wanted to go over those essays today, but after, like I said, reading some of them, I realized that we need to work on organization. So long story short is, you know, we need a plan. We need to plan better. Uh, when I was coaching football, you know, I had to coach um, a game on Friday night and I spent all week working on a game plan. So when Friday night showed up, I already knew what I was going to do. Um, I didn't have to think about it. So some of you have already had feedback from me where I've left um, feedback that says something along the lines of, you know, work hard on planning your outline ahead of time makes executing your essay easier and better. So uh, you don't have to think on the fly. You can actually just focus your energy on polish, right? You're just making it better. So that's what you uh, want to do uh, when you're planning here. Let Amon in. Welcome, Amon. We just got started. Uh, we are using um, Nearpod again today. So if you can get over to Nearpod, that's cool. If not, you can follow along on the uh, presentation here. But uh, pretty much just letting everybody know that it's important to have a plan. It's important to have a plan before you start working on the final product. Uh, yeah, make sure when you're finished, it looks good. Uh, I think the lesson uses the grocery list example. Like if you're going to the grocery store shopping, you need to have a plan or some sort of list to know what you're going to buy uh, so you don't forget anything, uh, so you don't buy the wrong thing, um, so you don't get home and are trying to make dinner and you forgot, I don't know, garlic. Right, so make sure that you've got a plan. Make sure that you've got a list. Okay, make sure that you're organized. Okay, so this is our scale uh, today. You can just kind of circle those of you that are in Nearpod. Uh, so by the end of the day, hopefully I've got you guys at least at a three. I can, you know, Hopefully that you're able to develop claims and counterclaims fairly uh, with evidence by using an essay outline. That's what we're going to work on today. Um, maybe uh, some of you are, you know, you know how to use uh, an outline, but you're not sure how to organize your information. I've talked to a couple of you already and you're like, I've got this information, but I don't know what to do with it. So hopefully today we show you what to do with it. And if you're a one, you know, you don't how you don't know the first thing about working on an outline. You know, you've been in school your whole life and you've had teachers hand you something or like, OK, we're going to use this to get organized. And you're like, I don't even know where to start. You know, what do I write where? So or maybe you're a four and you could develop claims and counterclaims fairly uh, with relevant evidence and you're able to use an online template or online outline template. And uh, thank you for the Naruto again. Uh, and you're able to edit it afterwards to turn it in for full final draft. OK, hopefully when we're finished, hopefully when we're finished. Um, 
the idea is you could take this outline and throw it into a Word doc and make it pretty, and you've got your essay. So you don't have to write this thing twice. That's my goal. So, okay, nothing wrong with that. I've got a couple threes here. All right. Gonna keep on going. Okay, so let's talk about what an essay outline is. So basically what an outline essay is, is a uh, structured template that you could use to organize your ideas. And we did something similar to this in module two last uh, segment and segment one, uh, where we talked about the importance of structure, um, which is basically how you build your points, you know, to get your idea across or your point across. When you're writing um, an argument of essay, you need to make sure that your argument makes sense. Remember, we touched on using logos previously um, when we had grown up using, you know, ethos and pathos, trying to use that emotion and credibility. Now you're working on writing an argument that makes sense using logic. Um, yeah, when you're writing an essay, you need to make sure that your argument makes sense uh, and that it's uh, logically organized so that your reader, me, uh, is most likely to agree with you. Or at the very least, I can see your point or whoever. Um, so if I end up agreeing with you, awesome. But if not, at least I can see where you're coming from. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get your point, make your point and show that it's it's worth having. Um, so it's very important to present your information in an organized way uh, to make sure that your reader uh, knows what you're talking about and that I'm able to see your point. So a powerful and effective argument is really going to depend on the way that you sort and present your claims and your evidence. You know, it's important to organize those ideas. Um, Again, like it says right here on the uh, presentation, a powerful and effective argument depends on the way that you sort and present uh, your evidence. Keep your DJ happy. Keep your DJ happy. Organizational methods and tools. Uh, Nearpod messed up my aspect ratio here, so sorry about that there. Um, but if your sources and appeals are not organized, your argument will fail. If you have uh, those logical fallacies, those logical pitfalls in there, it will fail. You'll lose all credibility. It won't be worth listening to you. All right. So our organizational methods and the tools, right? In the early part of this uh, lesson, uh, you have worked on your claim. So you've seen your list of claims from, should we hold doctors and pharmaceutical companies uh, responsible for their um, use of uh, opioids during the, you know, our opioid crisis that we have? Uh, there is the ever present question of should college athletes be compensated, um, you know, paid for playing sports. Uh, then there is the uh, claim about should people be held responsible for um, what they put online? You know, should something that I post on social media, um, should I be held responsible for that? Right, so whatever happens, so. Um, but this is how you want to kind of like look at it. Your paragraphs, whether you're writing something that is 1,200 words, 500 words, or even 300 words, you need to make sure that this is happening in all of your paragraphs, okay? Um, your claim, you need to make sure that you have support for it. So you're gonna use a, a quotation, right? You're gonna use a quote, a literal quote. You don't have to paraphrase here. Um, does that quote speak to the counterclaims point? 
or you know, does the quote refute the counterclaim? Everything should be doing something. OK, uh, your counterclaim does the quote. Uh, does the quotation support the claim? And then does the uh, does your backup speak to your point like the counterclaim? OK, so think about it like this. Your claim. You're going to mention it in your opening, your introduction. But your first body paragraph is going to be you presenting the counterclaim. So notice how uh, up here underneath uh, claim it says, does the quotation support you know, claim? OK, good. But then does it speak to the counterclaim? Because that's what you want to do. You want to show what's, um, what's wrong. But uh, planning and organizing stuff, those are real life skills. Uh, it'll help you with everything from planning essays now uh, to getting organized in the future. Uh, I think they talk about like loading and doing laundry. Um, but whatever, whatever you plan something, you have to decide what you will do, right? And when, uh, what you need to do, when do you need to do it, and then you need to execute. So when you're organizing, you're deciding uh, what order stuff should happen. Hopefully I haven't lost anybody. So you're just getting organized. You've got all this information and now you need to put it in the right order so it makes sense. So as you plan your argument and organize your ideas, you know, remember we use them all the time. Um, I, again, I've touched on the importance of being organized. An organized plan will ensure that your argument is presented in logical order. Uh, it's critical because your audience is more likely to be persuaded if your argument makes sense and they can easily follow your way of thinking. Um, the lesson has something that they call a research organizer. I think I showed you guys sort of the um, Cornell note style last time. Uh, whichever one you want to use, if you have that with you now, take a look at it. So take a look at your research organizer or however you've been taking notes and look at the information that you've gotten, right? Take a look at what your claim is and the counterclaim. A lot of us are forgetting the counterclaim. Organizing that research is the first step in organizing your ideas. So once you have read everything, once you have read all your research, you need to decide how you're going to um, structure those paragraphs, okay? Uh, does the quotation support the claim? Does it speak to the counterclaims points, et cetera, et cetera? Um, another little trick uh, that I like to do, I'm going to go to the next slide here, um, is when you have those research, when you have those, when you have that research, it helps to go through and either color code it or put little um, symbols there. You know, this is counterclaim or this is claim. You know, put C or put CC next to the information you have. Uh, what I do uh, with the essays that we have already, or when I did this assignment, I went through and I looked at that research. I copied it and I threw it into a Google Doc and I went through and I highlighted it. So that way, if I saw something, I was able to um, identify just by looking at it. This is claim support. This is counterclaim support. Just drop of a hat, you can look at it and see. So. Um, one of the examples here, we've got uh, your claim. You know, should uh, people should not people should you know should people be held responsible for what they post on social media? And if you believe that people should not be held accountable, then that would be your claim. The counterclaim to that would be people should be held accountable for what they post online, right? Uh, if you've read all three of the sources in your lesson, uh, one will say yes, one will say no. You need to make sure that you go in and you find both your claim and the counterclaim. You should have somewhere that you have recorded your evidence. Then, once you've read everything, think about what your claim is. Does that make sense? So, if your claim is that everybody should be held accountable, find something in that research that you've done that says the same thing and use that to kind of be your voice. Um, 
after you found your quote and the information you need to figure out, you know, which one is a go with. I've got a better, a better example here. So um, here's another one here. So Coke is the best soda, right? That is what you think. If your essay is about Coke being the best soda, your counterclaim would be, um, some people believe that Dr. Pepper is the best soda, you know? So then you wanna make sure that you find support, you know? Uh, right here, I've got like an example of some evidence here. I'm gonna go for my Nearpod kids. Um, this is what I'm gonna have you do here. Does it support the claim or the counterclaim? So your claim right now is that Coke is the best soda. So with the information you have on the screen there, I want you to highlight claim support and then underline um, counterclaim support, right? In 2018, Harvard University created a study and recorded that 75% of Americans drink 10 liters of Dr. Pepper every year from 2015 to 2017. However, the study also found 85% of the Americans, uh, sorry. However, the study also found 85% of Americans drank 14 to 20 liters of Coca-Cola in the same time span, showing that Americans purchase Coca-Cola as well as consume more Coca-Cola than Dr. Pepper. So what supports your claim? What supports the counterclaim? Mm -hmm. All right, taking a look. There you go. Yep. Your claim is that Coca Cola is the best soda. Okay, I can't remember what I said. Um, if some, okay, so some of you are highlighting and underlining the same thing, but differently. Put C for claim and CC for counterclaim next to it. So if you highlighted something just on to the left or right, just write C or CC next to it. So I can see what your claims, counterclaims are. Yes, that is your claim down in the text, right? There we go. Okay. All right, Alex, I'm gonna pick on you here. So what is, okay, starting off, Alex, uh, what is our claim? Um, the claim is that Coke is the best soda. Okay. What from the research down here supports that claim? Um, that Americans drink 14 to 20. Um, I mean, Americans purchase Coca-Cola as well as consume more Coca-Cola than Dr. Pepper. Okay. All right. So what is the counterclaim here? That... 75% of Americans drank 10 liters of Dr. Pepper every year from 2015 to 2017. Okay, very good. So when we were writing this essay, the Coke versus Dr. Pepper essay, uh, you would have your claim in the first opening uh, paragraph. Um, so you want to make sure that you start off with your introduction saying, you know, um, Coca-Cola is the, you know, best soda. Um, however, some people believe that it is Dr. Pepper. Uh, research will show that it is, you know, one and then not the other. So um, then in the second paragraph, you would show your counterclaim. You know, some people believe that Dr. Pepper is the best soda. 75% um, of Americans drink 10 liters of Dr. Pepper every year. All right. And then your follow-up paragraph would 
would back up your claim because then you can drop the bomb and say, however, 85% of Americans drank 14 to 20 liters in the same time period. So we'll see this here in just a second. Very good. Good job, guys. Remember, refuting their claim squashes the opposition, right? All right, so our outline. This will help keep you organized. Uh, an organized argument uh, focuses on negating the counterclaim first and then on supporting the claim, right? So negating means, you know, to cancel, uh, disapprove, or to make ineffective, not work, right? You're going to take somebody else's claim, your count, the counterclaim, and you're going to show how it doesn't work. But uh, an outline will help you organize and support, um, you know, each of your points. So the outline that I've got here is the one from the lesson. Uh, you could use this one, or if you want to use something similar, totally up to you. Um, but as you build your outline, make sure that you write in complete sentences. And be sure to note where the source of each piece of your information, you know, came from, right? Because once you've written all that, you want to be able to know where it came from. Let me go to the next slide here. All right. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. So as you uh, as we build our outline, we got to make sure that we use MLA citation. You'll see here um, at the end. You'll have. Uh, your parenthetical references here. So that makes sense when you'll see the actual examples here. So we have our uh, introduction. Um, I don't know if you guys can see my little mouse hovering over stuff, but your introduction, this is where you will have your thesis uh, statement as well as the bridge, right? Um, this should introduce your claim as well as some of the counterclaims. OK, then body paragraph one is going to be about your counterclaim. This is going to be, you know. The opposition, right? You're going to start off with that. You could even use these little uh, uh, topic sentences, you know, the transitional phrase like uh, despite the claim that Dr. Pepper or despite this claim, you know, whatever. So it'll make clear that you're addressing the counterclaim. So it's the opposite of your claim. So despite more Americans drinking Coke, some believe that Dr. Pepper is better. And then you would present your counterpoint um, next, right? State a reason that your opponent uh, supports this idea. That would usually be your quote. And as soon as you do that, you would refute it, all right? That's where you would automate, like, disprove it. So uh, counterpoint A would be 75% drink it, and then you would refute with, however, 85% drink Coke, right? You can use that uh, transitional, however, uh, it shows me that you're about to drop some knowledge on me. And then you do the same thing with uh, counterpoint B, um, and then you refute that. So your body paragraph one after your introduction should present the counterclaim, support for that claim, and then you come in and, and give evidence to refute it. And then you do it one more time. All right, everybody good, okay. Body paragraph two. Your second body paragraph is where you finally get to go, but here's a better idea. Here's my claim. So this is where it's our turn to kind of show our claim. This is the uh, intro again, where we get to say, even though a lot of people drink Dr. Pepper, more people drink Coke. Um, here's this Harvard research. And then you would back that up with some support here, right? And then you present your second point, your point B. That's another reason uh, that supports your claim. And then, you know, you support that again. OK, 
Okay, so uh, make a point, give it support with citation. Make a point, give it support with citation. All right, you could just keep using this pattern over and over and over again. All right, so if you're using it in high school or college or somewhere else down the line, you can keep doing this, even in speech writing. All right, your conclusion. All right, uh, I talked to a few of you already, but your conclusion is pretty much um, how you're going to finish up your uh, ignored the topic sentence here. But this is where you get to tell everybody, you know, what your thinking was. You know, this is sort of like a introduction all over again. So your conclusion, you just kind of restate your introduction based on the information that we have or that you've just read or uh, based on the previous information or the following information, not following, but the information presented here, it's easy to see that Coke is simply better um, uh, selling and is highly is more consumed than Dr. Pepper. You know, this is where you can uh, state your claim in a new way. Um, what's your argument about? And then you're going to remind people why it matters. OK, so uh, finish this up right quick. Oh, let me go back. So those of you I've talked to about your essay standing on its head, um, that just means if I read your conclusion, I should know what your claim is what support there is for it, what the counterclaim is, and what the support is for that, but why yours is better. Okay, so if I could flip your essay over, you know, your conclusion would be very similar to your introduction. All right. So the sample outline that we're going to use is the uh, voluntourism topic from uh, 304, I believe. Uh, that's the one with the uh, traveling the world. So, and working at a uh, abroad, right? So our introduction here is um, our thesis statement, right? That's our, that's gonna be our intro. So in our introduction, we're gonna introduce our thesis statement. While many teens might view traveling and volunteering abroad as a worthwhile adventure, there are more genuine and effective ways to make a difference. So, with that said, what is our claim? I don't have the thing open, so someone can just unmute, and that'd be cool. What is our claim? Um, there are more genuine and effective ways to make a difference. Awesome. Great. Very good. Is that Alex? Yep. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, so uh, our claim is there are effective ways to make a difference. Okay, so the counterclaim to that is voluntourism is um, a great opportunity for teens to make a difference as well as travel at the same time. Okay. You don't have to poo-poo on the counterclaim right away. You want to show that um, here's what the opposition says. Okay. And the counterpoint A says volunteering to help those in need is, you know, a worthy use of time. Everybody agrees with that. That's one of our persuasive elements, you know, the ethos, pathos, and logos, right? So uh, we're using those uh, techniques here. However, we jump right in to uh, refute counterpoint A, right? Children are often kept in poor conditions to elicit sympathy from well-meaning visitors or volunteerists who are then moved to donate or return in the future, paying you know, exorbitant amounts of money to volunteer and keep a terrible cycle going. And notice how I have the uh, parenthetical reference there. Notice that it's 
a quote. Boom. Rolf. That is going to the MLA page or this uh, work cited page. All I have to do is go down and look for Rolf and I'll see him. All right. Yep. Your research support uh, should all have parenthetical citations included, right? Uh, that way we don't have to try to figure out where your evidence came from. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. So we've got counterpoint. You've already refuted it. So then you're going to come back and you're going to talk up the counterclaim again. Traveling to new places builds character and is a value way to learn about different cultures. Traveling to new places builds character and is a valuable way to learn about different cultures. Okay. Is that uh, is that evidence? Does that support volunteerism? Or does it, you know, not support it? Someone besides Alex. Amon, Brooke, Eli, or Derek, can any of y'all unmute? Can you repeat it again? Yeah, OK, so um, counterpoint B, traveling to new places builds character and is a valuable way to learn about different cultures. Is that, um, does that support voluntourism being good or does it not support voluntourism? It might support it. Uh, it. Yep, it does support it. It's saying, you know, volunteerism is great. You know, you get to travel and it's a good way to build character. To which you then would refute that, adding uh, a direct quote, right? So notice that it says, you know, perhaps one of the most damaging elements of volunteerism is how, if unchecked, it can perpetuate small minded views of the world by taking, you know, fake and structured experiences and selling them as um, unabridged and eye opening. And then close or close quotes and then parentheses, Carlos, and then that period. So now I can go to uh, the work cited page and see what Carlos, where that information came from. Thank you very much. OK. All right, so finally we get to uh, get to our claim here, right? So this is our thoughts and feelings, right? So teenagers should not volunteer because there is a more genuine, effective way to make a difference. Remember when Alex read the claim earlier on the um, thesis statement. So now that I've stated my claim again, I'm going to give you example, right? So I just said that there is a better way to make a difference. So my first point and my first example is you can volunteer locally um, and create lasting relationships. I didn't make that up. That came from my research, OK? And then here's a direct quote to support that point. And then I would, you know, studies reveal people who volunteer consistently with an organization for at least one year experience low blood pressure and uh, improvement in their memory and drastic reduction rates of depression. And then I've got Michael's, right? And then I come into point B. Again, it's, it's going to support my claim again. The money spent on volunteer packages could be better spent on donations. Uh, to local or international organizations. Again, that supports that there are more effective ways to make a difference. So if you notice on the previous um, paragraph, I gave you the counterclaim, support for that claim, but then I you know, took it apart. I refuted it. I destroyed it. And then I gave you another counterpoint, and then I refuted it again. OK, so you are giving um, more uh, support to your claim than to the counterclaim. Oh, and then there's the uh, your numbers down here. So notice how these quotes are a direct quote. OK, so this is where I want you to use direct quotes. 
Just follow this example. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so time to wrap it up again. Um, your conclusion, your topic sentence, you know, uh, at the very end should, you know, come up again. This is going to be you stating your claim in a new way. So your team, your team, you're presenting your claim again in a new way. And our claim is that there are more effective ways to help. So teens should volunteer where they are most needed at home, where they can stay to see the job through and form genuine lasting relationships. And then you're going to remind your audience why this is an important issue. Well, I'm talking to you about this because volunteerism turns other people's hardships into someone else's vacation. And that's not right. Okay. So uh, notice there at the end, I'm using uh, pathos and ethos because I'm talking about what's right and what's wrong. And I'm um, messing, not messing with your emotions, but I'm using your emotions to um, convince you. But I'm also using evidence and logic to support my claim. So, uh, but notice how each piece of research here, um, how it had uh, parenthetical citations already included. So make sure that you include that in your outline as well. Hop on back here. Notice how it's, you know, every time it's not my thoughts, you know, my support has parenthetical citations there. Oh, boom. Okay. All right, so correct formatting. I have seen several um, let me rephrase that. I have seen maybe three of the papers I've graded that actually had a works cited page. Uh, do not forget your works cited. You need to make sure that you're putting, um, you know, the correct citation format in there. Um, this is on page uh, four of lesson 306. You can actually see uh, examples and I've got it here as well. So uh, remember your parenthetical citation may look different depending on the type of source that you used. You can actually go to online generators. Uh, Bitme.org is fine to help you kind of put the information in. Uh, you don't want to just copy and paste um, web links, right? But if you are using internet sources um, and they have an author, you would just put the author's last name. If an internet source without an author, you would put the article name, like the name of the article. If it's a source without an author and without an article title. So let's pretend that we are using, um, what is it? National Geographic, right? So I went to nationalgeographic.com and I found an article by um, Robert Jackson, right? And Robert Jackson um, wrote an article about um, voluntourism, right? So at the top there, and I was quoting him, I would just put Jackson. Okay, so let's say different universe, I was using National Geographic, um, and I found an article, and it was called The Dangers of Voluntourism, but there was no author name. I didn't know who wrote it. I would just put The Dangers of Voluntourism. And then if uh, we went to National Geographic and it was just maybe um, an infograph, right? And I was able to get information uh, from that. I would just put uh, www.nationalgeographic.org or .com. I can't remember which one it is. And if you're using a book with an author, let's say you went to the library and you grabbed a, an analog book there, you would put the author's last name and the page number. So let's say, uh, Mr. Jackson wrote a book and it was on page, you know, 312. You would put Jackson, comma, 312. And then if it is printed text with no known author, like we didn't know who wrote it, you would put the title of the book or a magazine or newspaper. Um, so it would be italics for a book title and then quotation marks if it's an article. OK, so if you actually had a uh, copy of National Geographic, the magazine, that's where you would um, 
uh, put National Geographic and then the um, article title in quotation marks. But if you use one of those generators, it'll do it for you. All right, so here is some examples here. Um, there's the name that would be Jackson, not Shulton. Uh, the internet source without an author, the cost of the human cost of volunteerism. Internet source without an author and without an article. You know, there's the shortened website. You don't want to give me some huge long um, website, right? It should just be the pretty much like the home page. Uh, same thing with the book. You would just give me the author's name and the page number. But if it was, you know, just a magazine or a pamphlet or something, you would just put um, the name of the article or the name of the book. OK, speaking of which. Is this is ethical volunteerism? Is that the name of a text or is that the name of an article? Give me a volunteer. Brooke, have you done it yet? Um, can you repeat the question? Because it kept like shorting out. Oh, sorry about that. Um, ethical volunteerism. Is that a uh, title or is that the name of an article? It's a title. All right. Very good. Because if not, it would be. Uh, I'm sorry. It should be italicized. <laughs> I screwed that up. Yeah, that should be yeah. italicized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it had quotation marks around it, it would be uh, an article name. I really screwed that up. So uh, by the way, if you guys are writing your essay and you're finished and you need to do your work cited page, all you have to do is um, hold control and enter at the end of your last sentence or somewhere on the page, and it'll actually jump to the next page. So you don't have to hit enter a whole bunch of times. So control enter will start a new page. So life pro tip there. OK, so uh, I wanted you guys to see this. This is what um, I used to grade y'all. This is the rubric, right? So I want to make sure that you're you know, following the pattern. Does it uh, present the claim, the counterclaim? Does it give point? Uh, a, does it give counterpoint A, et cetera, et cetera, right? If you're following that pattern and it's easy and clear to see, 10 points. Uh, is your claim there? Is it clear and specific, right? If it is, 10 points. I'm not going to give you an eight. It either is 10 or some version of <laughs> zero to seven. But if your claim is unclear, uh, you're going to get probably a seven there. Okay, your support. Is it thoroughly supported by research points? It should be. You know, that's what the research is there for in the um, assignment and the lesson. Same thing with the counterclaim. Is your counterclaim clear and specific? Does uh, your counterpoint, does it actually refute? Is it clearly disproven? That's another 10 points. The format, please make sure you guys are properly formatting your stuff so it looks like it does in the lesson. OK, make sure it's pretty because I got to look at this stuff. Keep your DJ happy. And then citations. So if you have your. Um, all your information here and you forgot to do a. You know, parenthetical citation. That can take you from a 70 out of 70 to a 60 out of 70, and that's the difference between an A and a B, you know, so. Uh, get those points. Make sure that you're using the uh, citations correctly. OK, this assignment doesn't need the. Um, work cited page. All I need here is just the uh, evidence. Um, the citations within your evidence there. So um, with that said, y'all make sure that you, if you've done this, go back and look at your online or your outline uh, guide. Uh, and just to re reiterate, the more time you spend working on it, 
uh, like using complete sentences and formatting. When it's time to write the essay, all you've got to do is, you know, put it together. You've done all the hard work already. This is one of the times where it's OK to copy and paste. So once you've done that, you just got to add a few transitions and you're practically done. So spend that time making sure that your outline is extra awesome. So when you go to 307, all you got to do is just kind of take it apart and then put it together with um, some transitions. All right. OK. Let's go on here. All right, so before I get to the extra credit here and we finish up, um, uh, any questions? for me. Any questions about how to do this? Uh, I know that we didn't collaborate a lot today, but it's sort of just kind of. Want to see if you guys are doing OK. All right. Everybody good. All right, if you need any more help, man, Shoot me a text, give me a call, and I'll work with you, okay? Make sure that you work on this and you make it good before I get it, though. <laughs> all right, so finally, the extra credit. So all you have to do for the extra credit is write a short paragraph, uh, giving your honest um, review of the online template or the outline template from the lesson, right? Tell me what you think about it. Tell me what you like and tell me what you don't like. Uh, it doesn't hurt my feelings. I did not make it. Um, but I want to know if you guys um, like the outline, because if not, I can show you a couple different kinds um, or different styles. So. Um, all you have to do is write a short paragraph uh, kind of reviewing the outline template and uh, you can go into collaboration or blank assessment. Uh, if you haven't already maxed out your extra credit, you can go in there. Uh, so uh, go into gradebook and that's where you'll see any available collaborative uh, or blank assessments. Um, if you've already maxed those out, email me your paragraph and I'll give you a few points um, on your like lowest assessment. So uh, you guys can take a picture of this so you can um, finish that up. But uh, just looking for a paragraph, like I said, on the template here because I I got my own feelings about it. Um, if you think that a better explanation is needed, let me know and I will work on that. OK. If you guys have any questions, uh, I'll hang around for a bit. If not, you're free to go. Um, I've got meeting. I've got a faculty meeting tomorrow, so I'm not going to be able to uh, help out tomorrow. But um, if you need anything, let me know. Okay.